Ngamehiotewa in the news for Monday the 8th of April, North Korea appears to be preparing for a fourth nuclear test, according to intelligence reports. South Korean intelligence has detected heightened activity at the main atomic test site in Pungeri, and a security official says the North may launch a test missile as early as this week. However, it's also believed Pyongyang could fire on April the 15th, as it's the birthday of the late founding leader Kim Il-sung. Japan has taken the step of ordering its armed forces to shoot down any North Korean missile heading to its territory. Meanwhile, New Zealand's opposition parties have come down hard on our Prime Minister's comments regarding New Zealand's potential role in the rising tension between North and South Korea. Labour said John Key should have focused on de-escalation, while the Greens' Russell Norman suggests he may have offended North Korea's ally, China. John Key turns up in China and says, yeah, we're with the United States in a war against North Korea. What do you reckon China would have thought about that? Mr Key clarified his comments today. Well, my position is that I believe that China will be instrumental in ensuring that there is peace and they're committed to that peace and so is New Zealand. The Prime Minister has spent the day promoting New Zealand tourism to our second largest tourist market in China. John Key was in China's third largest city, Guangzhou, which is experiencing a rapid growth spurt. On his agenda were meetings with politicians and local tourism heads and the signing of an agreement with China Southern Airlines. He also told President Xi Jinping he welcomes Chinese investment in capital ventures but would prefer they didn't buy land here. Tim White of the New Zealand China Trade Association agrees that New Zealand's terms of trade should not be dictated to us. We need to decide what we want and go out to the, to the world on that basis. And the battle for the Maori Party leadership is heating up, even with its co-leader in China with the Prime Minister promoting Maori economic development. Peter Sharples withdrew his earlier comments to media that Te Ururoa Flavel should leave rather than threaten resignation if he isn't given a leadership role. I just hope that I stay leader and that he stay with me because he's a good worker and his time will come. Te Ururoa has denied making any leadership ultimatums. It's believed the vehicle sought in the George Thairoa murder case has travelled south. A blue Jeep Cherokee was seen at the time Mr Thairoa was fatally shot and was later observed being driven erratically southbound. Police are asking people in the Taranaki, Benedale or Taumaranui to come forward if they can recall suspicious behaviour on or after March the 18th. To Egypt and the anniversary of the April 6th movement was marked in Cairo with more civilian protests against Islamist President Mohamed Morsi. The Supreme Judicial Council has now called for the resignation of the chief prosecutor who was appointed by the president. Talat Abdullah's resignation is a key demand of Egypt's mostly liberal opposition which accuses Abdullah of unfairly pursuing charges against critics of Morsi and his Muslim Brotherhood movement. And finally, the World Health Organization says there is no proof that China's H7N9 bird flu virus is being transmitted between people. China announced just over a week ago that the virus had been found in humans for the first time, with 21 confirmed cases and six deaths. Well, that's today's news. Kanuinga karerimatsuwa maite fare korero rima moriora.